Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of Psychonaut Sessions Ultraverse Edition. I'm here with my co-host Aaron Conaway. How you What's doing, happening, sir? everybody? Yeah. I'm doing all right. I'm ready for some crime in space. Hell yeah, man. Ugh, I love this book. <laughs> I'm having so much fun with this book. This one's still a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hasn't waned, and I just, again, Norm Brayful and his cover is just like... Dude. Yeah. Dude. That's a blast. Like, well, I actually... What, oh, go ahead. From what you were telling me, the moon is going to play such a significant part of Breakthrough that mm -hmm. uh, that's a fun little nod. Oh, yeah, and this, like, plays all into it. Um, so we'll have to kind of decide, like, what we what we want to do here. Um, right. Right. Uh, and and some decisions that we want to make uh, after this, but yeah, I don't have. So I normally do not like uh, photographs incorporated into comic art unless it's just like done well. And I actually didn't notice this; it wasn't jarring. The colors all blended well for me and everything. And it wasn't until I took a closer look that I was like, "Oh, yeah, those are photographs." Yeah. Um. But. I think just it all works so well. It just was great. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't really. Yeah, I've never had an issue with the combination, but yeah. Well, sometimes cool it, sometimes it's just done wrong. It just doesn't yeah. feel right. It, this is like literally uh, this channel is becoming the Norm Brayful Gold Love channel because <laughs> fucking dinosaurs, dude. I, yeah, that's the best opening we've had thus far. <laughs> Oh yes, man. This is beautiful. Not a single complaint of this page. I didn't even care that I mean, contextually it makes sense here within the next page or two, but initially this made zero sense from where the last <laughs> issue ended and I was like, yeah. I don't even care, it's a T Rex. Yeah. Well I I was actually like kind of like well anything could happen because the last issue was that like weird demon thing that possessed a cartoon character. So right. I was like, there's all kinds of shit that they're just going to go wacky with this, which I love. Um, yeah, damn, just like how dynamic is this? Just, oh, love it. And then Norm does not disappoint. Nope. He's <laughs> took it to 11 on the next page. <laughs> He's just gonna, he, and he does this. He goes from a splash to a double splash. Yeah. And he always just ups the ante on each one. God, what a wonderful image. Yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, yeah. all of, there, there's just so much to take in on this double page. Like, Triceratops yeah. in the back. The weird prehistoric bug in the upper yeah. left. Yeah. Pterodactyls. Like, this is just awesome. Mr. Eldred just fucking rocking it. Right. Making the letters part of that action again. And a great use of the shading. We were complaining about the use of shading in hard case number two. This is how it's done. Right. Well, um, that makes sense. It, it makes sense that you wouldn't see <laughs> right. any detail because he's right. in the T Rex's mouth. Right, right. Well, oh. and just the shading is done well, too. It right. Just, it doesn't look like, oh, it's a black splotch. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll stop shitting on other. I just love, I just, it's so refreshing. Um, yeah. Norm Bray Fogel. Um, so cool. We get a little, just a little bit more of Prime on T Rex action, flipping the damn thing over, um, basically taking it by the back of the neck and snapping the back of its neck. And of yeah. course, he's in a virtual reality simulation chamber. That's a while they go to a lot so far in Ultraverse. Yeah. Like, yeah. VR is. is... Well, it was the thing. You gotta remember, sure. this was the no, age I mean, I'm not confused by yeah. it, but yeah. I mean, I do. Lawnmower Man was the greatest blockbuster of all 80, 90s like. I'm not even cinema. gonna let you finish that sentence. No. <laughs> no. I do like here where, I mean, I know I've complained about talking heads and exposition, but this one actually did a really good job of, of speaking to some of the points that I've had. Yeah. Or, uh, or not points that I've had, but like concerns. Yeah. That, yeah, this kid is surprisingly violent. Yeah. So I well, like that this is this is a plot point. This isn't just like 
yeah, he's just a, he's a little a much. Nod to it. He's yeah. and the general is watching and they're discussing. You know, he's just like he's his strength is um, off the charts. And the thing is, is that his but the, it's not just that he's like brutal, but his his combat techniques they say are insecure. So he's right. just like he is not because he's a fucking kid. He doesn't know how to fight. Um, sure, let alone he's got fight no technique. Like a soldier, so it's just it's dangerous. Yeah, he's got no technique, but he's his he skips to violence very quickly. Yep. God, I love the cartooniness of this, and again the way the letters work with it, but just the fate. Oh, oh yeah, Eldred's like firing on all cylinders all across Ultraverse, but his yeah. work with Brayfogel so far is my favorite. Yeah, combo. Yeah, like, which is weird to, to have lettering and penciler be my favorite combo, but it just they work together so well. No, yeah, he's he knows how to work with uh, Bray Fogel's work, and Bray Fogel does both uh, inks and pencils, so he's doing the art chops. Well, maybe yeah. that's that's a bigger factor than I'm realizing too, probably. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they had conversations about the placement of lettering because it se- it seems to be so integral to the art itself like yeah. he's making room for it you know right. he's actually um so anyway yeah we can just sit here and it's right we're on page three <laughs> Bray Fogel and Eldred love fest for sure um and then they have him simulated in the vacuum of space and he starts choking and something about the skin begins to expand because of like air valves or something. So he's starting to blow up like a balloon, which is really cool. Yeah. Really fucking cool. And they turn it off and um, to try to stabilize him. And they bring in medics and then he wakes up and starts another chokehold on an adult. Um, yep. And again, in the upper right panel, we've got scary ass prime. Yeah. Like, that fucking kid that's just like I'm more powerful than you yeah um so basically the guy convinces Prime that like we were we've been there to help it was that weird scientist guy that ran away and made you and he's a guy that we've been trying to rein in um, it doesn't take much to to trick Kevin like well, he's, he's yeah he's a young dumb kid yeah um, and then they lure him in with an introduction to President Clinton back when everybody loved President Clinton. Yeah, this was this was a great blast from the, and like Chelsea too. Like the whole yeah. thing was just like, oh yeah. my god. Yeah, yeah, very. Fun I remember. And interesting. I remember like the first time I ever saw that in a comic. I think it was a, I think it was something in DC and Superman maybe, but it was Carter. And so I remember when I read this as a kid, being like, oh, yeah, man, this is awesome. Like, my era as president. Yeah. Yeah, I I kind of like it when they incorporate actual presidents into books sometimes. It's, it's just fun to, like, imagine, like, you know, what Clinton would have been doing in a superhero universe. There's right. one. There's one I'm going to cover on the channel, maybe by the time this drops, actually, but it might be a little bit later about a bunch of like ancient Aztecs that rise up to take over the world and and um, George Bush um, gets like decapitated and he like ends up like walking around like some kind of cyborg head dude and Dan Quayle takes the the fucking reins oh, of so like it's senior okay be, yeah being this like uh, like Rambo president to fight off these like ancient Aztecs like it's fucking wow. crazy <laughs> um, but it's just it's so it's just fun so yeah he he of course then we have this another situation where he, he's a boy but he's right. interacting with another teenage girl as an adult and he's kind of like oh oh I made her smile and kind of being flirtatious right and, and then even says um at the very end, like as they're parting, you know, you look a lot cuter than on TV. And it's like, yeah. oh, dude. Yep. And then it's like, uh, and he's not knocking himself in the head for the reason he should be knocking himself right. in the head. Because it's right. not even a factor to him that yeah. he he's an adult man. Yeah. 
So then we go back to the his girlfriend. Yep, Kelly so, and her mom. And I, like she even refers to herself as girlfriend, and I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. I don't, well, I don't she's understand. a confused teenage girl too, and so. She well, yeah, but it's, I don't know if she's referring to Prime or Kevin, in when she says it. Oh, later. yeah. Because well, like, I, it, I, why would it be Kevin? Because you don't yeah. really care about Kevin that way, and then. You're pretty accepting of Prime, all the it's so yeah. It was just a weird way it was presented. Well, and also like this is a weird scenario because he had just saved her in that giant battle with that cartoon dude, and yeah. it was kind of traumatic. So maybe through the experience of that, now she's starting to feel some kinship with Prime, and almost as angry that her mom. I think it's almost like a reaction that her mom would think, Psh, "Oh my gosh," you know. Yeah that you would like what do you have a crush on an ultra and i think it's almost like just a teenage well yeah i i am you know but it's yeah. like what they really wanted it so here's prime he is um getting tested and he's submitting to the test they're trying various different things um and this is where he tells him that he's going to go to the moon because there was an energy blast that came from the moon that cre ended up creating the strangers and many ultras across the planet. Well, and it happens, yeah, and it happened prior to that and created Hard Case and, yep. and the squad. Yep. So um, they call it the jump start effect, and so they want Prime to go figure it out. Um, and this is where this actually leads right into Breakthrough, because that's what Breakthrough. Right is um and so they have him in a virtual reality combat scenario where they're fighting wrath i think this is the first appearance of wrath which is the ultra that works for like what is it ultra aladdin type? aladdin and aladdin I, I don't remember if this i remember aladdin because i remember oh wow that's kind of a cool name back when i was a kid so i remembered it but i don't remember if this is in our reread if this is the first mention of aladdin or not but clearly the the general is not a fan of aladdin yeah i think they were briefly referenced um in strangers maybe in strangers yeah um but it wasn't it's not really explained you just know it's just like the ultimate corporate entity that or government program or something yeah that's just trying to oversee everything and have its fingers and everything um so they basically have this like vr simulation of wrath because he is like the ultimate warrior working for aladdin to fight off prime so that's like that's where you get the sense that the the general's like kind of doing this to get at Aladdin a little bit. Well, he says as much to one of the yeah. like, scientists. Right. They're like, why, really? And yeah. Yeah, just call it a precaution, he says. Um, so then we got our first test flight um, of him going up into space for real. And this is where we get the reference to the cover. Um, his skin starts bubbling up and he basically just starts like falling and like a freaking asteroid and crashes yeah into this huge explosion look That's, at the lettering though god oh uh, all of it the sheer boom yep and I, yeah the, so the good. look at the body just oh man as soon as he breaks the atmosphere just That's so good yeah Poor kid starts suffocating and then he falls down as an asteroid into the earth in a large ass explosion and naked and like beat to all the hell and the freaking general is just like eh, strike one and basically it's just <laughs> little maggot screwed it up like that's just he horrible. seems to be getting a little tougher about it though because he does crawl out this time before passing out yeah and I mean, no, he did just fall from space. <laughs> yeah, he's starting to get used to this experience, um, even though it's still painful. And then this is, but this is where he's just like, you know, no, I'm not doing this. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. This sucks. I don't, I can't do it. I want to go home. And then, of course, the general is like, well, 
your dad wanted you to be here and has this video recording of his dad who's obviously being coerced and threatened but well it's uh, not even we learn in the next page it's not even his dad it's another vr situation right right just telling him you need to do this to serve mankind and he's like okay yeah and that's where this happens this like really really actually heartbreaking hard scene I actually this. yeah this scene I really I really liked I and it was yeah. creepy too yeah because like, he's about to spill the beans to the and the poor wife is just like she's so distraught. nothing makes sense I mean like, he's what? distraught she's distraught they're both like the 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 tension and emotional like conflict is really real and palpable and then yeah he's about ready to tell her and the phone rings voicemail picks up and it's the general saying you better keep your fucking mouth shut yeah and i mean that bottom right one is straight ec comics right there oh, like yeah Fuck the yeah. horror is so yeah. Good. yeah it's so weird because this like this book has the appearance of being a superhero book but it's fucking not yeah it's it's really not it's a kid who's like oh this thing is happening to me so I should be a superhero because that's what his mind is projecting. But this is a fucking straight up like military a horror, horror is, comic. Horror yeah. is deep in the DNA yeah. of this book. Like yeah. it's 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 some of it is subtle, but some of it like this where it's it's very real horror. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't do anything. It's my son. Ugh. And the body horror, of course, like that's the most obvious one. Yeah. I didn't right. fully understand what they did here, but I just chalked it up to comic book science and okay. Now yeah, you can well, fly in space. Remember when they created Ultraverse, they had a bunch of scientists come in there when they initially created their Bible to consult. Which is weird. I would like to know that I would like to interview Dave Ulbrich and say be like, when you consulted these scientists to create all these scenarios in Ultraverse what did they contribute that you use? Like, what is it that the part of Ultraverse that you you think is like kind of leaning in a more like based in science direction rather than just being? Yeah, because there's not a lot of it in Prime. <laughs> I mean, uh, unless the, unless there were just theories back in the '90s I wasn't aware of that they thought was yeah more possible than <laughs> so, turned out to be. <laughs> So somehow they're able to take, I guess, from the data they've collected of what's happened to his body so far, they're able to coerce his transformation somehow to be able to fit that um, the, the environment of space. Right. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, no, I yeah. get, I get, I get what happens. I get the re yeah. end results, but I just, I waved my hand at it. Like, okay, no, yeah. it's comic book science. No, I was explaining it to the audience. Mostly, God, this yeah, is fucking they tried crazy. to explain it, but <clears throat> yeah, Florch. fucking wonderful lettering. Um, and somehow this, this particular prime body has like. Oxygen, like extra oxygen tanks or implants. Things. Well, and they gave him an oxygen tank too, so he won't choke anymore. Which that was, right. you think that would have been step one, because yeah, <laughs> he sure. kept almost dying. Well, because if something happens to his body in space, you know, right? That's like a backup too. So they up there priming him, primed for outer space, and he's going to be going. And this is straight up continued in breakthrough number one. So we've got like there's this it's weird because so i only switched the last few books that we looked at away from the actual reading order like i just basically chopped it up a little bit but it's still in the same line as the chronology on fandom right but if we're still following that chronology then like breakthrough doesn't happen for like 20 or 30 issues away from here so really i don't yeah, so I don't know how. Oh, that... you mean of all Ultraverse, not Prime? I was like, yeah, it says yeah, continue of to break. all Ultraverse, but that's a lot of shit. So right. this chronology thing is not like I'm not down with it. I'm not. This is where I was like, okay, you and I are gonna have to start making some decisions here, and fo and following Marvel fandom as the official chronology is probably not gonna work. Yeah. Um, because it's literally the way I even these videos are 
going out into the world. Man, I did the math on it. We won't even get to breakthrough until those vi breakthrough videos wouldn't even drop until Christmas, probably. Good God. All yeah. right. So you and I, uh, when we get offline here, can make some decisions about what we want to do. All right. Yeah, and I mean, if anybody watching this right now has any way in one yeah. way or another speak yeah. now or forever hold your peace yeah i would love to hear any suggestions this was kind of cute um this little like vignette of gerard jones and lynch rosiski and like caricatures of them kind of just talking about the yeah. process of writing prime but it always it, reminded me of like when Hembeck would do something for the Marvels bullpen, mm -hmm. like, and I liked that. So yep. yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I I don't have anything major to say about it. But, no, um, that's about I, it. It, like, it yeah. was a it was a fun read. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, this ad sticks out in my brain and consciousness like nobody's business. Um, I didn't find anything in the letters column that of note, unless you something that you wanted I didn't, to bring in. No, okay. No, nah, none of them have been, and I've I've kind of started just scanning both the letters pages and the those little segments in the middle talking yeah. about Ultraverse in general. Like, yeah, yeah I don't, I I have yet to glean anything really cool. So yeah, I just as kids it. we devoured them. Yeah, you well, know. then, yeah, it was, like, cover to cover. You read all the that, ads, you read everything. Because that was, like, your entrance. That was your internet, really. We didn't have right. the internet, so it was, like, that was well, your was only a, way to have community and know what was going on. Yeah, it was a cool way to feel like Gerard Jones and Lynn Straszewski and Bray Fogel and those guys, like, like we knew them. Because, like, they'd yep. tell, you know, and plus it just made working in a comic book like working in a company, combo company sounds utterly amazing. Like they yeah. were just all having a ball. Yeah. I mean, if they weren't, that wasn't true, but it worked. <laughs> well, I, you know, Tom Mason and Dave Ulbrich and all them and Chris Holm, they said that the Malibu offices around this time was a fucking blast. And when they oh, talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, mean, I was speaking more it, to like yeah. main like Marvel DC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it yeah. sounded yeah. it would sounded like our heaven, um, right? Like early '90s, working in the Malibu offices. Just um, I can't He's remember who day. it is, but there is one guy um, that the Ultraverse podcast got dudes have had on before, and he started working at the oh, Malibu yeah. offices when he was like thir our or age. thirteen. Our age, yeah, yeah, like. And Lucky it bastard. Just, oh yeah, in the way he talks about it, I'm just like, I hate you. You don't, <laughs> you don't deserve any more good things in your life. That's like literally sounds like you just got heaven in your teenage years. So, all right, well, that's a little heavy, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, he can no, have I, more good things. <laughs> he can, he can, he can. All right, well, I liked it. It was good. I'm looking yep. forward. I'm looking forward Grandma's to more. Still good. All right, me cool. too. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, like, subscribe, notifications, blah, blah, blah. Keep it psycho.